seated wherever you are so um it's palm sunday um well some will some will ask the question that so if this was an in-person meeting how would it have really been like do we allow like the traditional palm sunday here where yes we do the palm leaves can be brought i mean it's a day whereby we commemorate the entering of jesus christ into jerusalem but I'm going to be taking that same story and I'm going to show you something amazing and um, something else that is amazing that we can find in that story. Are you ready? Matthew chapter 21. And let's read in a New Living Translation. Matthew chapter 21 and the verse number 1. Um, we are going to start all the way. We are going to read down. All right, we are studying the Bible, so you should you know what we are doing. Amen. Matthew 21, verse 1. It says, And as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Beth Fig on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. And he said, Go into the village over there. He said, As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey there, tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, The Lord needs them and you will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Israel, Look, your king is coming to you. Riding on a donkey, he is humble. Riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw the, their garments over the colt and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him and the others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. So Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people around him were shouting, Praise God for the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem in an uproar as was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? They asked. And the crowds replied, Is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee? Glory to God. So we've ended here. I want us to end here. But um I want us to look at something much more insightful in the scripture that i believe can immensely bless us all how many believe that we can be blessed today by what we are about to look at amen now today's message is titled a great opening or a great entry yeah a great entry so that is what we are looking at today so what does it mean when we say a great entry or what does it like describe it's going to be very short, but I believe that as short as it is, it will be insightful and it will inspire you and help you to know why this day exists. Amen. So, it's a great entry. Why is it a great entry? What's so great about a man riding on a donkey and then coming into a city? Well, I'll have you know that this man was actually 
the one that gave our lives a meaning. Are you guys conscious of that? That Jesus Christ is the reason why we have a meaning in life. So that's why when you go to Christ's embassy, they will say, giving your life a meaning. Because you may think that your life has meaning before, till you actually see Jesus Christ. Do you know that? You may think that your life has a lot of meaning. So when you enter such churches, you think that, ah, so are you trying to tell me that my life didn't have meaning before? Emphatically, yes. Because that is how we all thought that, oh, our lives have so much meaning. But at the end of the day, we now looked at the thing and we now saw that that is not how it's supposed to be. So you see, all these things contribute to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me explain it to you in this way that he, the day, in fact, it wasn't by the death of him. Okay? It wasn't by his death that our lives had meaning. No. That was the final stage of our lives actually having the real meaning. But from the moment he set foot in Jerusalem was the moment he set in with a different principle. He set in with a different meaning. So that was why the Pharisees didn't like him. They didn't like him because they knew that this will give people a different mindset. And with this different mindset, they will prosper. And they will not need them anymore. They will not need the people, they will not need these Pharisees anymore. The people will not need them anymore. So knowing that this thing is going to come, they didn't like it. That was why they never liked Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ brought a meaning to life. What is this meaning? Number one, healing. Healing. Jesus Christ brought healing into our lives as people or children of God. He brought healing to us in our lives as children of God. Have you ever thought about it that way? So when we actually say what is he bringing or what is the meaning that we say he's bringing to our lives, he's bringing number one, healing the most paramount thing healing he is bringing healing somebody say healing so the lord is bringing healing so the moment he entered into jerusalem that was when healing entered that was when deliverance entered that was when miracles entered everything starts from there so the entry of jesus christ the memory of this you know, when it's always Palm Sunday, I assume that it is now happening. Because it brings a certain joy in your spirit that it was because of this entry why we have this ability to be who we are today. Is that, is that not amazing? Yeah. It's very amazing. You will never imagine it, but that is, what, that, that is the actual truth. And nobody will ever tell you this thing. But the reason why we are here today is because Jesus Christ gave our lives a better meaning. He gave our lives a better meaning. He wanted our lives to have a certain meaning different from the others. That was what would differentiate us from the Pharisees. The Pharisees were just following laws. Here was where things were happening with Jesus that were even above the laws. And you know that nobody is above the law. Do you know that? Even Jesus Christ is not above the law. He cannot violate the law. But there are certain things that he surpassed what even the law was saying. For example, the Pharisees say that they don't heal on the Sabbath. So are you telling me that if somebody is dying and you have the ability to heal the person, you don't heal on the Sabbath? Is that what you are trying to say? So Jesus Christ surpassed that. He brought that freedom. He brought that right that we can violate any law that goes against his principle that he has brought. Because he came to reconnect us back to our original source. Jesus, sorry, God. And heaven. Because that was, that was where we all originated from before we came here. Just that we don't have a memory of it. We all originated from heaven before we came down here. 
But we think that we don't have a memory of it because God doesn't want us to have a memory of that. And you would ask yourself, how do I know that it is the wisdom of God? So this actually told us that the Spirit of God will teach you all things. Do you believe it now? So, Jesus Christ coming into Jerusalem actually was him entering our lives. That was a sign of him entering our lives and transforming us. Because he went to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was never the same again. Miracles upon miracles. Signs upon signs. Wonders upon wonders. So many things happened. And by the time he was crucified, a lot had happened. This Friday, as we stand here, we are going to be commemorating this same thing again. And may, this Wednesday will be taking communion. So get ready. For that, it's going to be a communion service. Amen. And I've told you that these things are what makes up the Christian life. Some people do not celebrate Good Friday and they have their own perspective to it. But I think that this was a valid um, moment that we, everybody should even take notice of. He entered Jerusalem, meaning he entered into our lives. He entered into our lives. And what did he come and do in our lives? What would he use us for? That, was, that is why we, we marvel. And we made noise. And we gave a joyful shout. Because he entered our lives. Not knowing what you come and do. But we knew it was for the better. Because the prophet had said. And indeed it has come to pass. So we were excited. Do you see? So all these things, when you now look at them and you now, you know, picture them, you now realize the importance of Palm Sunday. It is not only for waving the branches around, but it is to signify that the Lord Jesus Christ came into our lives. What for? To inundate in us His spirits. That's what. Someone will ask yourself, why did the Lord Jesus Christ come into our generation? What did he come to do? Why would he want to use me of all people? Just ask yourself that question. It's just by the grace of God. It's just by Jesus Christ entering into your life. So Jesus Christ entering into that town, meaning that he was there to alter and to change the place for the better. So you see, in the realms of the spirit, there is always change. So don't think that the same strategies that happened or that you used a year back will work for this year. No. You need to update yourself. A, a, a drew baby cry, the, the phone that you are using that you, to watch this thing, it has a moment where it needs to update. It has a moment where it needs to update because it can't stay the same. Something has to change. Do you understand what, where I'm coming from this afternoon? Yeah, something has to change. Because the same strategies that they are now bringing into technology, because technology is ever-changing. So if you don't also transform or make updates, you are going to be stagnant or you are going to be left behind. And people are going to leave your brand. So even a phone even has the ability to update itself. So it's the same thing. He came to update our lives. He came to change our lives for the better. Because he realized that if he does not do anything about it, it's going to remain like that for God knows how long. So he's to the second coming. And the second coming would, have, would not have been possible if he actually did not come the first time. Amen. His first coming would not have been possible. In fact, the second coming would not have been possible if he didn't come the first time. Sorry, that was all I meant to say. So it's very important and it's very key that we notice that he entered into our lives to come and make a difference, to come and make an update because things had altered and changed in the spirit. So then it was now time for us to also upgrade, change our rank. Amen. It was now time for us to change 
or alter our rank. So therefore, now that it was time to change and alter the rank, he needed to come and do it himself. Because he realized that we have been at the same place. And the spirit is always changing. Because there are so many things happening. There are so many things that the devil is doing. I told you at your life arena recently that we had. I told you that there are so many things that the devil is actually doing. So, apart from what the devil is even doing itself, the spirit is like that. It changes. It has times and seasons where it changes. But as to time that takes there, it's not possible. But the spirit, the things that happen in the realm of the spirit changes with time. That we work with here. So as you see, we are sitting here now and we are talking, talking, talking. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit, which we can only catch by prayer, by uh, revelation. And that revelation comes from you being strengthened with the Holy Spirit, because the is the strength of the Holy Spirit in you that allows you to be prone to spiritual things. That enables you to see or to be exposed to spiritual things. So, number one, why did Jesus come into my life? I told you number one is healing. Number two is the Holy Spirit. Now, we've read a lot about the Holy Spirit. I've spoken, I don't know if I've spoken to you immensely on the Holy Spirit. But if I haven't, then I think it's time I do. The Holy Spirit is actually Jesus Christ in spirit who lives in us. That is why the Holy Spirit, whenever if you have the Holy Spirit on you, whether you are a pastor or not, once you lay hands on someone, the person has faith and you have faith in what you are doing. That is it. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? It's no magic. Once you, the person has faith that I am going to be healed, that's it. And you believe what you are actually doing that is going to work. That is your solution. That is the person's solution. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, you have to take notice of all these things that happen in life. Because they are of great importance. Oh, yes. So, he came into your life to bring himself in you. He came into your life to give you himself. So, he said, if I don't leave, the Holy Spirit will not come. But I will give you another comforter. A los paracletus. Another comforter of the same kind. Okay. So he said that I will give you another comforter of the same kind. Of the same kind means it's of the same lineage. So it can either be a duplicate of him or a different person. Or a different spirit and it was a duplicate of him these revelations you catch directly from the spirit you, you, you can tell certain men they will think that oh it's like you are going mad but it's not so that is how it is G the holy spirit that dwells in us is jesus christ working actively in us so whenever you are praying, you activate Jesus Christ in you. That is why we say that whenever you come to church and you leave, we have to see the attitude, at least a little bit of the attitude of Jesus Christ that dwelleth in you. Do you understand where I'm coming from this evening? Exactly. So you need to understand or you need to come to the understanding of the matter that in this life as a Christian, it is very, very, very necessary for you to have the Holy Spirit and be strengthened in it. Not just have it for fashion's sake, but to be strengthened in the Holy Spirit, else you'll be found wanting. Because that, that is Jesus Christ, the Spirit. So if there's anything that you should be looking for, if it is the gift of prophecy you want, seek Jesus Christ because he was the best person to do that. That is why we say, seek the Lord himself, not me. Because I can't do anything. It is only his spirit that he has given unto me. Into me. To use. To also show people the way. But apart from that. I am just a shell. And we are all shells. We will be. Oh, listen. 
we are all nobodies. Had it not been for the Lord, do you know where would you, you would have been right now? No, be very honest with you. Had it not been the Lord, do you know where you would have been right now? Ask your neighbors somewhere if you are watching with somebody. Or personally ask yourself if you are watching alone. Do you know where you would have been right now if the Lord had not intervened or if he did not come into your life? Your life would be miserable. Hence, you, you wouldn't even live to see this day. Your parents wouldn't have lived to see this day. Not to even think about reproducing, to give birth to you who is watching this thing. So it is a very great thing to serve the Lord. And it is a great opportunity to have the Lord to enter into our lives. A mortal body. An immortal entity into a mortal body. Just to reconcile. Just to give us a better life. And you are telling me that Christianity is too hard. After all these good things that he has done for you, all you need to do is to lay your life down for him. And you are telling me that Christianity is hard. It is difficult on the way. But once you are able to remain in size, once you are able to understand the sacrifice, the thing that he actually did on the face of the earth, when he was there at the time, you will know that it is worth it if you put every worldly thing away. So nobody will even have to tell you anymore. You would automatically know. You would know. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So it is very, very key. Very, very important that we know why Jesus Christ came today. He came for one, to give healing. To give healing into your life. Because look, be before he came, many were suffering. You remember the woman that Jesus Christ met at the well and told her that you've not had one husband for you, I've had five, and even the one you are with is not even married. You are not even married to. Hmm. Now, don't think that because they just said it like that, it seemed like we be a from or something that was supposed to be taken light with. If that's the direct, that's the only good translation I can find for you. It's more than that. A woman who has divorced, married, divorced, married, divorced five good times. Don't you think she's going through emotional stress? Maybe you may think that those things were not possible back then, but believe me, you they were. It is in this generation that we highlight those things. Why? Because we feel like it is damaging the people slowly. So that is why we have mental wellness now. But still, it was there previously. Just that it was not as dominant as it, as it was today in our current world. So the, she had emotional damage. Do you really think at that point, after marrying, divorcing, marrying, divorcing five times, she really believed in love anymore? She just believed that she needed to have a man beside her to help pay the bills and to help do certain things at home as the man had destined uh, uh, as God had destined the man to do oh, whoa, 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 I'll find another one so at that point she, she was tired and Jesus came and Jesus seemed different to her and she knew that this was different so this should all give you a notion that Jesus Christ did not just come to save the world he came to heal us from the inside He came to heal us from the inside. And nobody even needs to tell you this. And when he left, there's one special scripture that I always like. Let's go back to King James Version. And I'll show you the scripture. I'll show you the scripture. Matthew, the same book, Matthew 10 and the verse number 8. The same book, Matthew 10 verse 8. It says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely what? Give. So it means that you have received something. That should have, this should have clicked a long time ago to most of us. But you see, there's nobody to show such things. Even if there was somebody should, to show such things, would many listen? But in as much as there's a reason for us to gather here, 
and I have seen it. It is right for me to also show you. Because I have freely received. He came. So I we freely received him. When we received him in Jerusalem, we then received him in our lives to be a part of our lives. Not only to live with us in the community. No, but to be a part of our lives even when he goes away. Because a day like that will come. And today, we live to enjoy this glorious fruit. Is that not amazing? So he came to give healing to our inner being. And he knew he could not do it alone. So before he left, then he told us that we should heal the sick. Sickness is not only when you have something more functioning in your body. Sickness can be financial, emotional, so many things, psychological. Sickness can be so many things. So when, when we talk about healing, healing goes a far, far way beyond sickness. Haven't you been seeing the promotional videos that we've been showing? There's one that we've been showing repetitively. And it, it, there's a testimony there that says, healed of depression. That should show you that sickness goes a long way than lung this, uh, diabetes this, cancer type 2, AE type 2, weight type 3, uh, type C4, yo. It goes a long way than just sickness. He came to give healing to our inner man. Because there was so much happening around that time. That even when you try to contemplate, hmm, when you try to contemplate it, it can damage your mind. So he saw this and he said, no, I can't let my children suffer in the hands of these Pharisees. My children cannot be stagnant. The Christian was never created to be stagnant. So therefore, why should he allow a mere man to allow his children to be stagnant? It is as though you have sent your child to school and your teacher or the teacher there does not want your child to move forward. So the teacher continues failing the, the, your, your, your child. It means that the teacher wants your child stagnant. So what you do to that teacher? It is either you report him or you get him fired or you confront him about it. One, of, one way or the other, there has to be a solution. The whole basis of what I'm trying to say was that a Christian was never created to be stagnant. So that was why Jesus Christ came to then upgrade and move our lives. And then he gave us the power to even upgrade in it more because he gave us who? Himself. That was the best gift of all. The best gift of all. He gave us his spirit that we should grow in his spirit. The thing that he was able to do, we can do greater than this. So then he gave us his spirits that we should use it to work actively. Is that not beautiful? If this is not a thought for God, then I don't know what is. Oh yes, if this is not a thought for God, bre brothers and sisters, I don't know what it is. It's a blessing. A major, major Listen. Amen. It's a major blessing. Do, do you believe it? Yeah. It's a major blessing. It's a major blessing. He gave us his, his spirit. And we should grow in his spirit. And if we are able to grow in it very well, we can do greater than even what he did. Because he knows that we have that potential. He put all those potentials in his spirit. That was why he just gave us his spirit directly. And he said, it is the Holy Spirit. Work by it. And he will teach you all things. Do you understand where I'm coming from this afternoon? So you should know that his coming into our life was not just to welcome him into the community. Not just to welcome him into our homes. But to welcome him into our lives to be a part of our lives to stay in us and to give us the strength to heal us from the inside that we may be healed and we may be saved 
to restore us. He came to restore us. So that's number three. You can write so many things. The Holy Spirit, He came to restore us. He, he brought us restoration. He brought us peace. He brought us unity. He brought us the, the, the truth. He brought us parables. He brought us so many things. So the coming of the Lord is not just based on the palm tree. It's based on a lot of things. And it is my earnest prayer that everybody listening to this will now get the revelation of what Palm Sunday actually is. And will be blessed by it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Amen. It's a blessing. How many believe? It left to us if you believe it's a blessing. I'm going to be closing very soon. And what I'll close with or tell you is that if there's anything that you can do best is to seek God. If there's anything you can do best, seek God. Seek Jesus Christ. Seek the Holy Spirit. So the wishes, the prophecy, the whatever that you want, you can get your hands on it. All it takes is for you to get the Holy Spirit and to grow in it. That's why when you go to, um, is it Third John? Chapter 1 and the verse number 2. And it tells us that, what does it say? Read it for me. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. So this should tell you something, that he wants us to prosper. Amen. He wants us to do what? To prosper. Shut his evenimanonze. Is, is, is that not exciting? So he, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. So the spirit even grows to that extent whereby it becomes a part of your soul. Because your, the, the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus Christ will prosper you. And it not only prosper you, it will prosper your spirit, your mind, your soul, and your body. Hallelujah. So, you have to understand this. It's a simple truth that I wanted to share with you in a short time. And it is my prayer that this truth will go out to many. Beloved, as this week comes, let us think about our God. The sacrifices... That he made for us. Let us commemorate them. Let us cherish it. Let us cherish it. Amen. And I believe we'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. Let us pray right now. Father, thank you for everybody who has joined us for this glorious meeting. We ask that as we have gathered, may the blessing of gathering be upon them and keep them. May the word that they've heard today and may the truth that they've heard today take them a long way. May, it give, may this word give them more insights on why you keep. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated wherever you are.